Hi folks, Bill Wilson here with my old buddy Ken Hackathorn and welcome to another episode of Gun Guys. Today we're gonna, Ken and I are gonna talk about uh, a slight difference that we have. We, we, we typically agree on most everything when it comes to guns and, and uh, that sort of thing, but uh, one of our little friend, friendly disagreements is, you know, I think the, the Colt Shooting Master is the finest revolver ever produced. Produced by Colt, Colt Shooting Master, and my buddy Ken here, what have you got there? Well, Bill, this is a pre-war Smith & Wesson registered Magnum, um, which despite your fondness for the Colt, this is the finest production revolver <laughs> ever produced. And you and I have kind of had this, it's kind of like Ford and Chevrolet argument. Yeah. Uh, they're both fantastic guns. Uh, and made in a period, This is both guns are made in the Depression era, prior to World War II, where Sales were low. The only the best craftsmen built the guns. Time was not an element. It weren't, wasn't like today where they're trying to make yeah. them as fast as they can. Both guns, realistic, they represent probably the most expensive. That's probably the most expensive gun sold. Colt sold at the time. Yeah. This was at the time the most expensive handgun in America. It sold for sixty dollars. And they both represent a level of quality and craftsmanship that will never be equaled again. I know people tell me, well, how about the Korth made in Germany or whatever? Uh, yeah, they're still very nice guns, but I find that, you know, while I love Smith end frames and particularly the Register Mag, one, probably my favorite revolver, I have to admit the Shooting Master is without a doubt probably the peak of Colt revolver yeah. production. Oh, yeah. It's, go ahead and handle that a little bit, Ken. Well, you know, well, you'll, the, you'll notice everything about it is just the fit and finish is impeccable. And of course, this is a very rare one. This is a 44 special, so we're not going to really be dry no. firing, dry firing this one. Yeah. But uh, I have a couple of shooters uh, and, and of the shooting masters, and you have to admit the actions are pretty damn smooth yeah, on those they're, guns. They're pretty. As a matter of fact, um, I know most of them were 45 Colt. That was typical on 38 special. 357s are pretty desirable. I, this is the first 44 special I've ever seen. Well, actually, I actually have to correct you on that. The, 40, the 45 guns are extremely rare. Really? Yes. The com the common guns were 38 special and 357 magnum. Okay. Yeah. So, I'm thinking nerve services. Yeah. No. Okay. In, in the in the shooting master, the you know the the 45 Colt and the 45 ACP guns, you know, like the 44 special, are extremely rare and, and extremely desirable. And what's interesting, for example. The back strap of the frame and the front strap are checkered, and these were hand checkered. Yeah. This was machine checkering. Um, Colt kind of led the way of the matted, non-reflective surface that kind of predated mm -hmm. everybody. One of the unique things is, today we think in terms of specialty sights and handguns are mm -hmm. fairly new, but if you look, this is, we think about fiber optic being the latest craze, but this has got a red, basically plastic bead. That's another thing that makes this gun extremely rare. This gun was set up uh, like Ed McGivern set his gun, guns up. And for those you know viewers that don't know who Ed, Ed McGivern is, just just Google it. He he was a fast and fancy revolver shooter. He was one of the the top trick shooters back in the day. And one of his favorite guns to use was a Colt Shooting Master. And he always set his guns up with this type of yeah. sight setup. You know, it's interesting in that era, Colt. The rear sight was made for windage adjustments. It has a little tiny screw that you mm -hmm. loosen up, and the front sight was made for uh, elevation. Um, yeah, they're gorgeous guns. You know, uh, my buddy Tim Mullen has written a book on a number of, of really good books from uh, Collector Firearm Series, but he did one on the Register Magnum, one of my favorite books. And I think he's just, I think he just completed one on the Shooting Master which is one of his favorite guns. And I remember in his book, he did a side-by-side -side comparison of the registered Magnum and the Shooting Master in 357. And it was interesting, his observation was he actually shot better scores with the Shooting Master. Mm -hmm. He felt that the weight and the way it balanced was a, was a real plus. Um, certainly, um, as far as strength, really strong, rugged guns. I would probably argue that the double action trigger on the Smith was a little bit easier to manipulate, just a little bit. Yeah. Um, if you're talking about single action, which is the way everybody shot him in here, mm -hmm. probably the Colt had the edge. And again, you look at the spur here, this is not machine checkered, this is hand checkered. So it's it's pretty impressive. Um, and conditional wise, I gotta tell you, 
This one's spectacular. Yeah, it's a pretty nice gun. It, let, can, me, let me see that registered magnum. Let me show you. The, the big thing with the registered magnum was they came up with this checkered top strap. The barrel, rib, and the top of the frame is all checkered, which is followed through with the registered magnum or, and then the late. Model 27. Like Model 27. And remember in the Colts, you had to pull the cylinder release to the rear to open on Smith & Wesson, you press forward. And this one's unique in two respects, Bill. I mean, it's a five inch, it's my favorite lane. It's got the McGivern gold bead front sight and what they called the humpback hammer. In a sense that they discovered it to cock the gun, it was easier with this design. Mm -hmm. Cause remember people shot single action, but, um, and they did modify the first magna grip for this gun, which gives you a little bit more purchase so when you're shooting you get a little bit better control and less abuse to the to the hand when you shoot magnums yeah i mean i'm you know i'm a colt fan but i tell you what i have to i have to give it to smith on this one i mean this this is by far the best quality smith and wesson they mm -hmm. ever built i mean yeah. they, they did a fantastic job on this and this is a wasn't this action called the long action back mm -hmm. then with the pre-war long action yeah and, which and, are great which are smoother than uh, oh, the, yeah. the, the later the, the later actions and, and the interesting thing, the later action what they call a short action was designed for target shooters which is what the only shooting discipline exists you know the nra bullseye mm -hmm. shooters the long action required a longer mm -hmm. movement of the thumb the yeah. short action was designed to make it shorter, ease to cock. And in reality, it, they kind of ruined a good action by doing that. Yeah. To, to, to suit the competitive shooter of the era, they took what was probably the best DA action in history and pretty much compromised it for DA work. Yeah, yeah, this is a this is a beautiful gun also, I tell you. Yeah. This, this is craftsmanship that, you know, you just don't see much of these days. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hence, these guns are now are incredibly expensive to acquire, especially in this condition. Yeah. And I, I tell people, you know, there you've got a lot of neat guns, but there's probably the two guns I covet the most. If I said, you know, if you said, take any handgun and walk out of here, it's yours. I, because I'm a Smith Wesson guy, I, I wouldn't blink. This mm -hmm. reg mag would be what I stick in my belt. But if you didn't have a reg mag, this particular revolver would be pretty hard to pass up. If you're a gun guy, these are, you know, as good as it gets in the revolver world. Ken, thank you. Enjoy hey, the visit. good job. I enjoy playing with your new toys. Thanks for tuning in, folks. And be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel. There'll be more gun guys coming up. Mm -hmm.